cow pea, also known as black-eyed pea, Dinawa in Sepedi, and Indumba in Isi Zulu, is utilized by both subsistence and commercial farmers due to it being a multifunctional, widely adapted, and nutritious crop. The leaves can be used as a vegetable, and the seed can be used to prepare a variety of dishes. The crop as a whole contains a number of health-promoting compounds, such as vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. The plant is also known to be used in traditional medicine and can be used to treat various ailments, including bohazia, headaches, and fever. The cultivation of cowpea has great potential and should be promoted due to its versatile nature and nutritional value. This short information video aims to advise farmers of the farming practices that should be employed when cultivating cowpea to ensure optimal growth and subsequently a good harvest. The video complements the training material prepared on best farming and post-harvest practices. Further detail on the practices mentioned in this video can thus be found in the training manuals. Cowpeas grow best during summer. For optimum yield, cowpeas should be planted late November to early December in lower rainfall areas of South Africa. The optimum temperature for growth and development ranges from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. It can grow under rainfall ranging from between 400 to 700 millimeters per annum. Well distributed rainfall is indeed important for normal growth and development of cowpeas. Cowpeas can be grown on a wide range of soils, but the crop shows a preference for sandy soils, since it has a good drainage and also is less restrictive on root growth. Seeds to be used for planting must be sorted to make sure that they are free from any insect damage, for example, holes, wrinkles, those that are discolored, those that have visible signs of mold or any other inert materials. It is advised to apply an inoculant to cowpea seeds. The inoculant, a rise of bacteria specific to cowpea, promotes nitrogen fixation. The inoculant can be in the form of a liquid or powder for seed inoculation and must be applied to seed just before planting. Seed should be, should be placed in a clean mixing bowl to which the required volume of the inoculant as well as a sticker is added. This sticker helps, to, uh, helps the inoculant to adhere to the seed. Seeds must be mixed thoroughly, thoroughly to ensure good coating and they are often allowed to dry briefly before planting. During land preparation, the existing weeds, grass and shrubs in the site should be removed, followed by plowing and harrowing using a disc plow and harrow. The field should be ideally marked be marked into blocks of known areas with pathways between the blocks. This is to enhance movement of materials and also farming operations. The land itself may be reached or left as flat seed beds of the harrowing. Correct spacing will be determined by the type of cultivar and the growing pattern. More space between a plant and rows will be required with spreading types um, in comparison to those that um, grow upright. Furrows should be made with a hoe. And since cowpea is a legume, it fixes its own, own nitrogen and thus does not need nitrogen fertilizer. However, application of uh, phosphate and potassium fertilizer is usually beneficial. When using a chemical fertilizer, purchase a 234 NPK mixture and apply it roughly a rate of one teacup per um, five meters. After spreading the fertilizer evenly in the furrow, use a stick or hand to mix the fertilizer with the soil. Thereafter, the seed should be planted about two, three to four centimeters deep, and it is advised to plant three to four seeds um, between, uh, with a spacing of 20 centimeters between um, the seed. Cowpeas are usually grown under dry, land, rather, uh, under dry land rather than irrigated conditions. However, if cowpea is grown as a leafy vegetable, regular watering is required. 
sprinkler and drip irrigation can be used to irrigate, but water is used more sparingly with drip irrigation, thus this is encouraged. Protection practices, and we look at weeds. Um, there are a number of annual grasses and some broadleaf weeds that can be controlled by pre-sowing application of an herbicide. And weeding should be practiced on a frequent basis. Although herbicides can be used, hand weeding is encouraged. Herbicides should not be applied when cow pea leaves are to be used for consumption. Insect pests are the most important barrier to cow reproduction because each phase of growth attracts a number of insect pests. Control by one or two applications of insecticide is necessary. Pathogens like some fungal and bacterial pathogens, including bacterial blight caused by Xanthomonas, causes severe damage to cowpeas. Spraying with a copper compound can be effective in controlling bacterial blight. Rats are also a major challenge in the field and during storage. Rat poison can be used in the field when cowpea reaches maturity, however, special care must be taken when using the poison. At maturity, the plants will start to turn yellow to light brown and the leaves will dry down but may not drop off completely. Pods should be harvested when seed moisture content is between 14 to 18 percent. Now farmers can use two methods to determine the moisture content uh, or when the seed is sufficiently dry and that's namely through the bite test and the salt jar test. Um, and the details of these methods are then are explained in the training manual. Dry pods should not be left in the field longer than two weeks after full pod maturity to prevent shattering and early loss of seed. Harvesting can be carried out manually, thus hand harvesting. And for cowpeas grown for vegetable purposes, the leaves should be picked two to four weeks after planting. And this can continue until the plants start to flower. The dry pods can be harvested either by hand harvesting or by uprooting the entire plant. So when we look at basic post-harvest practices, the first important one is cleaning and drying of the seed. So leaves and pods should first be thoroughly cleaned under running water to remove any dirt or any pesticide or herbicide residue. And in the case of leaves, they should be first steamed and boiled and then they can be sun dried in a tray or on a plastic sheet, but never directly on the soil for a period of one day. In the case of pods, they should also be dried on a concrete slab or on any clean surface and not on the soil directly, and then placed in a shelter for one to two weeks for curing. Pods can be then later threshed by hand or by using sticks by beating the pods in bags. Sorting and grading of seed is important and this should be done by hand to separate all the broken, cracked, diseased seed from the full seeds. Now, the seed can be sold at local markets where some buyers prefer to buy the seed already cleaned and bagged into plastic bags. Usually bags are filled with one to two cups of seed and the important thing here is that the bags must be sealed to prevent in, any entry of insects. Other buyers will want to buy seed in bulk form and seed can then be packed in polypropylene bags or plastic sacks. And once again, it is very important that seed is well dried before placing into bag. The storage life of cowpea depends on its moisture content before storage. The lower the moisture content, the better the quality of seeds during storage. Only well dried and clean seed should be stored. Properly dried seed should be kept in closed airtight containers like glass jars or buckets in a cool dry place or in a refrigerator if it's available. And this is important because it will help to avoid damage by insects, for example weevils and then also fungi. Seed should be inspected and infested or rotting seed should be removed on a regular basis. Dried leaves can be stored in an airtight container such as well sealed plastic buckets. As a means to prevent weevil infestation, farmers often mix the seed with ash. It is recommended 
to avoid using chemicals in stored food. If chemical control is considered necessary, technical assistance is required for precise advice on chemical control. Fungal pathogens also present a major problem during storage, especially when seed are stored in conditions that favour fungal infestation, for example high humidity and high temperatures. These fungi can cause seed discoloration, shrunken seeds, seed rot and also cause reduced germination capacity. Measures to prevent fungal contamination of seed include re-drying of the seed, removal of contaminated seeds and the protection of stored products from any conditions that favour growth, like high temperature and high humidity.